Will AM4 make a comeback with RAM prices skyrocketing? Here's why it might seem like a good idea. Number one, 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM you can still pick up for about $100. For about $160 to $200, you can pick up 32 gigs of RAM. And while that might sound expensive, go check out DDR5 right now. It's anywhere from $350 to $400, obviously, if you don't get a combo deal. Now, let me show you these combo deals. This is over at Newegg, pairing motherboards with RAM, with coolers, and basically giving massive discounts on all the other PC parts. So the RAM price is actually sane. It's to the point where basically they're almost giving you these motherboards for free. They're like, hey, here's a free motherboard that we can't sell. You look at something like this one, uh, this is for a B550 motherboard, perfectly fine ATX one by ASRock with 16 gigs of RAM. The, the RAM by itself is $104. They're basically just throwing in the motherboard for $25 on top of it. So it's actually a pretty good deal. And then if you wanted 32 gigs, uh, you can go with this combo. This is insane. So you get a B550, a really high quality B550 motherboard. That's a tough one, giving you the motherboard for 10 bucks over and above the cost of the RAM. Again, it makes it kind of sane again. But here's our problem is that what CPUs are really available? And this is basically all the Zen 3 processors out there that are available right now. And you can see the Ryzen 5500, which I continuously have now recommended after telling you at the beginning of the year, avoid that CPU. I've been recommending it in the last couple build guides because really it's $75. And if you pair it with a mid-tier GPU, like a RX 9060XC 16 gigabyte, which uses the full PCIe connector on the bottom of the GPU, most of these, including this one right here, the RFB 580, only uses half the connector, including a lot of the NVIDIA GPUs, all the way up to the 5070 is the first one that uses the full connector. Meanwhile, AMD's lineup uses the full connector on all of them, even with a CPU like the Ryzen 5500 for $75. But then, okay, Jason, I want to go with the 50. You would have to spend, and honestly, I think this 5600 here, this, yeah, it's a third party seller at Amazon, probably doesn't really even exist. And let's jump over to, to Intel over here. Same issue, basically. What do we really have here? The 12400F is 150 bucks, and it, that's back ordered and not available a lot of places. You got to get a 12600K, and you're now spending 170 to $200 on your CPU. You can get an AM5 CPU for that, but the problem is you can't get the RAM for that, unless you get one of those combos at Newegg. So I would just say that I would love it to be a savior right now, but I think what's actually going on is that the system integrators, the people who put pre-builds together, figured this out about a month or two ago, because that's when these CPUs largely disappeared from store shelves, because they're probably buying them up en masse right now, because they will use DDR4, and for, especially for those lower end systems using like an RTX 5060 or 5060 Ti, they can get away with these kind of lower end CPUs to keep those costs low. But I think unfortunately we got beat to the punch on that one right now, because I can't find these CPUs anywhere.